We're back on the Jetta Coupe today. We are putting the uh, brake pedal set in because remember this is now going to be a hydraulic clutch. So we have an O2A, well, it's gonna be an O2J, but we have the O2A in there now. And I'll show you how to mount a pedal system to make your car a hydraulic clutch rather than the uh, dumb ca clutch cable. I got a B3 or B4 Passat pedal cluster from the junkyard. And uh, there's two versions you can get. You can get the B3, B4, or you can get the uh, Corrado. They both bolt directly into place into a Mark II chassis. The only difference is the late model B4s. They have a different um, clutch pedal like uh, attachment point. So this one has like that plastic, it's a plastic piece that the clutch pedal snaps into the clutch master. Whereas like older Corrados, they have a, a clevis style. So you just put the rod on it and put a clip on. So that's one difference. You can swap out the pedals if you care, but um, I don't think it's worth it. Anyway, uh, you can do all this. Uh, the moat, like if your car was completely assembled, you'd have to take the dash bar out. Uh, you'd have to basically just remove everything you can, move the fuse box over. Obviously this is our race car, so it's already completely stripped out. So this would be the best way for you guys to actually see what's going on. So the easiest thing to do, you make sure you have it into every OEM mounting point. So there's a stud down here, a stud down here, a stud over here. And the more important one is this stud up here. I uh, have this one just loosely tight, you know, and the same thing down there and over there. And what I'm doing now is just taking my Sharpie, finding things that need to be cut and, or dented, like right back here, um, right here, there's this little, this is like um, if you had firewall insulation, you would set the firewall insulation, it'd be like a little uh, plastic clip or like a metal clip that holds it in place. So that's in the way, so I'm just gonna lop that off. And the same right there, that's me cut, I put an X on it. And then um, one other thing is uh, your clutch cable spring at the top, so it's this right here, it has this little plastic attachment point. And obviously if you bolt this in, it'll kind of snap it. So I just kind of outlined it and wrote dent, so I'm just gonna whack that with a hammer and that'll solve that. Once this is completely flush in place, then we can get the clutch pedal bracket assembly that goes on the front, because that's where you get your uh, attachment point for your clutch master. This is on Corrado's and all G60s. So if you got a Corrado G60 or a, um, a Passat G60, you would have this attachment point and this is what we need. Uh, you can't get this off a of hydraulic ABS cars um, just because it's a different setup. So this is what you need. We'll get this on afterwards. Obviously, we got to drill, I think, one, maybe two holes in it because this is going to sit against the firewall like that. Let's get to popping this out and cutting those pieces real quick. paint everything later because remember we're bolting this on and then we have to affix the uh the brake booster bracket on the front which in turn is going to have us drill some more holes so um yeah, this is time to remove this guy because you need all these out i think the the master is going to go right in this area get it around the uh the steering column bracket but then put it on up here first and then Start this nut, hold it on there for you, and then just begin forcing it up and in. That went in a lot easier since the those metal parts weren't there. Everything's in place now. We are gonna have to drill this hole up here you see there's like a, a gap up here right about there so when you tighten this to that outside bracket it will bring it in but obviously we got to drill a hole first so that's the first hole to drill right here is the other hole to drill so we got to get that drilled that drilled 
then we can begin to mount the clutch pedal brace and booster brace in place. Okay. Use these little transfer punch things. Get them in a set. You just find the you know the the whip that fits in whatever hole. Set it in there. Hammer it. Leaves you a good mark. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna put the mark there and the uh, other mark up here. Then we'll take this back off. Drill the holes. Both holes drilled and made sure to deburr them on the outside too. I'll just throw this back in and then we can go to the front and see how the brake booster bracket's going to fit. Brake booster bracket is different from like a Mark III or a Mark III would have the studs facing inward. This has it facing outward and this also has this extra bolt right here, stud. So now you make sure these all fit and then go inside the car and you put all the crazy, there are these really crazy looking self-locking nuts. See, they have like this, these tangs on them. So these are self-locking and only to be used for brake pedals and stuff like that that you know aren't going to come off. Now you bolt it in. So everything's fully bolted on. And you see it's pretty on there. What I'm trying to do is I'll either make a brace coming off of this clutch to the firewall. I'm definitely gonna be making another one inside the car somewhere, but you can see there's also this bolt hole right here. Um, I'm probably just gonna make a, a piece of like steel with a bolt through it that'll have this extra support up here. Now you can see that this has to be all cut out. So try to get your best cut going. But before I do that, I am going to make a bracket for this right here that a bolt through there to hold that in place and then i'm also going to try to see what kind of bracing i can do i'll show you guys what i'm talking about but a big problem with these is that there's no support from the clutch up top or even the clutch master so like look just right now no clutch this is literally just flexing this much so in normal day-to-day -day driving you'd probably be fine with that but for a race car you need consistency so we have to get this to where there's no flexing at all. For this hole, the top hole on the pedal bracket assembly, it doesn't have a bolt hole on the R2. What I did was I took a hole saw, it's like an inch and a half, and I just drilled through, it's like eighth inch, maybe a little more steel, and put a hole through it, and then just put a, uh, a 13 millimeter bolt through it, and then welded it, and this'll kind of just hang out there. I'll silicone it in the end just to, uh, cover up any gaps or whatever. Got this top bolt bolted in, but there's still a little bit too much flex like I was anticipating. Let me show you guys. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, there's still flex. What I'm planning to do is just make a brace. And when making a brace, you want the straightest way possible. I made these two tabs. There's a hole already here in this bracket in the clutch pedal. And then up top, where the uh, steering column mount goes to. I put another plate on that and uh, it'll just be like, like this so I can still get wrenches or sockets on. I'm just gonna booger weld it on. There's no need to TIG weld this. It's never gonna be seen. Uh, I, j I need it in place so I'm just gonna hammer it with some uh, MIG welds and uh, we'll be done. There should be no more flex or very, very, very little. And I'll be perfectly happy with that. If there's any more that needs to be done, I'll do it on the outside of the firewall, going from the uh, clutch master to like uh, the strut tower or something like that. I just said to uh, paint it up, let it dry. Uh, now we're going to start cutting the firewall for the clutch master. I don't have a hole saw that's perfectly the same size. So we're using a 35 millimeter hole saw. So we're going to drill the hole through the front and then we're going to go around back and hole saw it out. That way we can actually fit. Because see right now it's a little too big. Okay. It's real tight in here because of the clutch pedal. So I have this quarter inch attachment going all the way out to the drill. Go through that. Right. And there it goes. So 
That was pretty easy. Oh, I got Jack and Jan over here. So if you couldn't fit it there, then you would have just had to take everything apart. This just saved a little bit of time. So that's all it looks like. But now the uh, the master should fit right in there. This one I got from that Mark III outside. And uh, Mark III's have studs right there. I had to take the studs out because this one already has studs on it. Perfect fit. Good to go. That's basically it. There's nothing else we have to modify or cut, anything like that. We can just now start assembling everything, which I'll probably just show it at the end. So when the booster's on, then you can put the brake pedal on at the clip here, and then the uh, clutch pedal. I, don't, I didn't clip it in yet because I gotta I wouldn't take all this off and just repaint everything. Everything's all bolted in place. I'm showing you guys out here first. I'm running a booster. There's, you know, you can obviously go crazy and buy like a brake booster delete kit and stuff like that and add like a, a Willwood or a Tilton Master. But for me, that, it doesn't make sense. I weighed this and it's literally six pounds. So it's six pounds, who cares? That's staying like that and I'm keeping the stock master. I have another brand new one over there. And how I'm gonna run it, it's each, each front is gonna be on the front. And then the rear, I'm only gonna have one line going back because I am running a, I'm gonna be running an inline e-brake, uh, hydraulic e-brake. So that means I'll be able to use my brakes as they should be. But then when I go to stage, I can just pull back the handbrake and it locks up the rear wheels. Uh, and also you can see I got the, uh, the clutch master in it's all tightened down with uh, self-locking nuts as well everything out here is also self-locking nuts because it's just something you don't want coming off here's my little brace that i made this shouldn't interfere with the fuse box or anything like that i'm still undecided on what i'm doing for wiring but more than likely to be as cheap as possible i'm probably going to use a uh, like a mark three box and just use everything i have from some mark threes around here best thing is there's absolutely no flex left so this helped out a ton. It just triangulated this right up to here. It's good to go. I have the steering column all bolted in in place. All the nuts good around here. So I'm very happy with this. So if you guys like what you saw today, give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.